Welcome back to the Unknown Angler. Today we're going to be tying Cassidy's Magic Fly. Captain Patrick Cassidy is owner of Cape Cod on the Fly, one of the best guiding services on the Cape. If you're looking to catch some fish this summer, give him a call. Uh, this fly is responsible for a couple of 40 inch fish on his boat last year, including the one he's holding in the picture. Anyway, let's get to tying. So I tie a lot of these flies. Um, so basically I do a lot of prep work before I actually start tying the fly. I tie a dozen at a time. I love these um, these material holding stations that Hairline makes. Uh, I buy two of them. Um, they're about 10 bucks a piece. They're fantastic. Anyway, we're gonna start with extra select craft fur because that's what we're gonna use for the craft fur in this fly. I like this stuff because it's really long. And basically I can get nine flies out of a bunch. Uh, I have a little jig here that I use to um, draw lines on uh, each one of these to get about a two inch square. And uh, the only thing I can tell you, the, the quick tip about this is when you cut out these two inch squares, cut about a quarter inch at a time and push your scissors through the material. Don't take a big cut like that, you're going to cut off a whole bunch of hair underneath. If you do it carefully like that, you don't get any or very little um, waste on the outside. Anyway, pull these down, get all the hairs aligned pretty well. Take a pair of serrated scissors. These are Dr. Slicks. They're great. They're not that expensive. And cut right through the base of these. Now you can see why I don't like waiting till I tie the fly to do this. It would take you, if you were to do this one at a time, it would probably take you uh, half an hour to tie this fly if you're not do, going through these steps. So um, take the time and tie, tie half a dozen or a dozen. Uh, and then pull all the fibers out from the short ones, throw them out. Then you're left with a nice long bunch of fibers, which is perfect for that this size fly. Next, we're gonna go along to the flat wing. Now, <clears throat> I use something a little different for my flat wings. These are Whiting's booger packs for tying woolly boogers. Uh, I use these feathers specifically for this fly for a reason. Not because they're cheap, not because they're readily available. Those are two big benefits. Uh, I have a ton of uh, flat wing uh, capes. Trust me, I've got a ton of them. Um, and the, the difference between this and a booger pack cape is the thickness of the hackle and also the suppleness of the hackle. I don't want these to foul. Uh, I want these to, and, and by the way, this is not a subtle fly. Um, so I use these pretty much exclusively for this fly. I've used, uh, I've used flat wings on it. I prefer these. Uh, I go through and I basically separate them out from the capes pretty quickly. I'll match up all the tips. Once I get all the tips matched up, I'll just bring those to length. Put those on a ruler. Measure out to the six inch mark. Cut them off. Those are all nicely matched hackles now. The flat wing, and you can go right back and you can put them right back in your holder and you're ready to go. Last but not least, let's talk about the uh, brushes. I am going to be using EP brushes when I tie this fly. These are stall butt brushes, there's six of them to a pack. You can get a dozen flies out of a pack here. These are the minnow heads, um, they have uh, flash all in them, uh, they're one and a half inches. That's what they call them, which means they're about three quarters of an inch on either side. These are perfect for what we're doing here. The original fly was tied with these. I make my own now. As you can see, I have an Oasis uh, dubbing brush maker. I can't say enough about this piece of equipment. It's absolutely perfect for uh, making dubbing brushes, and I make all my own now, mainly because uh, I'm able to customize them and, and make them a little, um, little differently than what you get uh, over the, across the shelf but these are perfectly fine for tying these flies and they look beautiful so onward and upward we'll go off to tying the fly now 
So I'm all prepped, I'm ready to grow. Uh, got my hackles all set. Got my craft for all set. Crystal flash, about ready to tie fly. So here we go. I tied this fly with a couple of different hooks. Um, the three out in the uh, tarpa mustad hook or the two out in the A-Rex minnow hook are the two main ones. X two out hook. These are short shank hooks. I like the short shank hooks. They'll give you a better hook set in the water. They're much stronger. They're not going to bend out on you. Um, and they're also really nice for tying this fly. Come back about one hook eye. If you hold your thread at about 45 degrees, it will make sure that you, uh, you tie continuous wraps back. Now what I want to do is I'm going to tie in some lead eyes. Um, they go by different names by different manufacturers. Uh, they're actually not lead eyes, they're aluminum eyes. They're called pseudo eyes by hairline. They're called fly eyes. Um, but these are 730 seconds uh, eyes. And they're aluminum and they don't weigh as much as the lead eyes. And I am going to tie them in at about a third of the way back on the hook shank. Make regular cross wraps on these. And then seat them with some under wraps. And there you have it. And then wrap your way back. Great. Now we're going to just add a little bit of uh, bucktail. Don't use your best bucktail here. This, uh, this is going to be used as the base for the hackles and it will make sure you don't foul your fly. Don't use your best bucktail. You can use some junk. Basically tie it in. And what we're now going to do is really quickly just a drop of UV glue right at the base of those bucktails, right in there. And I'm just going to move it around a little bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that it's in between all those fibers. And just pull on it, straighten it all out, hit it with a torch, UV flashlight. And what that's going to do it's going to create a nice solid base right there. That becomes a really solid area that will keep your fly from fouling. If you tie a lot of saltwater flies, you know that you can tie a monofilament loop in here with a 20, 30 pound test, and it will keep your, uh, keep your material from fouling around the hook. Right after that, we're going to add a little white dubbing. It doesn't matter what white dubbing you use. Actually, this isn't dubbing at all. Uh, this is a little white fur that I cut off of uh, uh, a zonker strip. And the reason you're doing this, the only reason you're doing this, you just put a nice slick coating of epoxy right where you're about to tie in your hackles and you want something soft that they can bite into so when you tie your hackles in they're gonna sit flat on the fly now remember what I did earlier I cut all the hackles they're all nicely cut they're all nicely done they're all the same length now all you have to do is just match the ends where you're tying them into the fly you put them right on top you can hold them down with your thumb you come over and you see how nice that uh, that dubbing does it holds that right in place it doesn't slip all over the place and start to uh, move around the hook once again because you measured these all previously you're matching up the 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 end you cut not the tips you cut them 
you measured the tips then you cut them so that all the ends match up so you don't have to worry about trying to align the tips while you're doing this this really helps out by the way I do tie a lot of these you notice how I'm not trying to be overly careful about uh, how this looks right now as far as how I'm tying it in and where I'm tying it in all this you know what looks like garbage up in here and everything else that's just fine don't worry about that right now you're gonna cover all of that up in just a second and then we're gonna go to graffer and graffer is real easy treat it just like you treated the bucktail tie it right on top of the fly go right up to the hook eyes just wind it in beautiful all of that is now sitting right on top of that fly right where you'd like it now I'm gonna tie in well I'm gonna tie in some this is called mirror flash or crinkle mirror flash you can use flasher boo you can use um, crystal flash it really doesn't matter uh, don't get overly uh, overly concerned about the materials you use use what you have readily available I don't like to over flashes I'm only going to use two strands of flash per each side of the fly um, I'm just going to tie it in on one side of the fly I'm going to take and pull the flash over to the opposite side of the fly tie it in on the opposite side grab both sides pull them straight back so they line up with each side of the fly and then match them up with the base of the hackles I'm going to make them about an inch shorter than all the hackles all right so now you have a fly with the body all the way back and now we're going to tie in the EP Crafter brush and you can get about two flies out of each one of these brushes they're pretty decent size so um, don't skimp here don't try to get three flies out of a brush don't get cheap um, you'll get you'll get two flies and maybe have a little left over uh, trying to get three flies out of it which I've tried to do in the past uh, it just doesn't just doesn't quite work out right uh, you don't have to have touching wraps here you can pull the fibers back with your fingers but I'm not trying to I'm palmering it back but I'm not this isn't open palmering I'm trying to get as close as I can with each su successive wrap but uh, I'm just not going overboard and you can pull it back and you keep going there's really no rocket science here this is a really easy fly to tie uh, it just takes a little bit of time not much and uh, you got to do a little bit of prep work before when you finally get to the eyes make sure you have a tight wrap behind and you can go over to I and now you're going to wrap in in front of it and you want to get at least two turns if you get three in that's fine too so one two that's eh, about two and a half then you want to tie that off one two wrap it back one two do not use scissors here use a pair of diagonal cutters okay now 
push all that hit all that uh, up fiber back make a couple of turns not a whole lot a couple of turns tie off here don't cut off just tie off for a second this is a whoop this is a um, eyebrow brush it works great uh, also you can use a a bodkin it'll also work great what you want to do is before you finish this fly off is you want to pick out this these fibers quite a bit I'm just gonna go around real quick I'm gonna use the craft the uh, eyebrow brush to uh, just comb everything back get it picked out you can tell that they really seeded themselves in there a little bit. Now, once you've done that, get your bottom back up there, your thread back up there. What you can do is you want to pull it back over the fly, the EP fibers back over the fly, and you want to create a nice, easy head. Now, what I like to do is put the thread in the back of the eye for a second. Keep your fingers up here. Don't burn your fingers when you're doing this. And don't burn your thread either. But take all those little fibers out of there with a with a lighter. And that'll, that'll make it a lot easier for you to wrap this head. And wrap back on the head. So that you can see the eyes and I continue to tie on these heads until I get a nice head that looks like it's proportional to the fly and I'll just wet finish the head sorry I'm Trying to avoid hitting the camera here. I'm not doing a really good job of whip finishing. Um, by the way, I'm about to coat that crap out of this head with epoxy, so I'm not going to have to worry about it coming apart. All right. <clears throat> Once that's done, you now have a fly that's in great shape up for the head. Great shape up in here. What we're going to do right now is we're going to add a little UV epoxy to it again. So put a little UV epoxy on the front and I like to get it back into the fibers right around don't coat your eye of the hook and you don't need to go back into the lead eyes either. I just want to get a little bit in those fibers around the hook because I'm going to pull all that back away from the eye now before I set it. And you hit it with the torch and you set it and that makes sure those fibers don't come over and encroach on the eye. Those eyes you'll be able to see them or you should be able to see them the whole time. See time. You see you got a little you got some fibers that want to kind of come over there. We'll put a little bit more epoxy on there in a second. I'm going to put a little bit more epoxy on the head here just to just to give it probably not necessary but um, that right there will catch a fish. You don't need to go any further than what I've done here but uh, all right good now we're talking that's really good and there you have it that is the Cassidy magic fly and uh, it's a really nice fly that uh, has caught a lot of, a lot of very large fish. 
See you next time.